I didn't know Frankly was still in, oh, involved yes. with uh -huh. the show. Well, that's mm -hmm. wonderful. How about Real that? funny little person. Before we even get started, I want you to see this lovely. Oh my heavens! <laughs> oh, you pulled I the fin off in there. Oh, <laughs> uh, terrible! <laughs> fine, fine! Right at the beginning of the program. This is, I am told by the lovely Doris, who is our consultant on this program and our inferior decorator. Uh, I am told that this thing is probably a couple hundred years old. Mm -hmm. This, this almost pewter. as old as you, Johnson. It looks a lot better too. Well, I remember it from when I was a child. No, it's a little picture. Well, you used to go with it. You used to go with its gill friend. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, give me up! <laughs> oh, little joke there, but seriously. <laughs> oh, uh, all the fish. We don't know what it is, but we think it's some. What do you think? It was some kind of a little tea thing. Because you mm. stick the water down and oh, oh, it's got, oh, it's terrible, terrible, it's bitten me. And then you see it's got a little hole where its mouth is. Uh -huh. Maybe you can see well, that, maybe you can. it could be a little incense burner too. And it's sort of like you, it's got a little hole where your head is. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like that. Would you put that down and read the mail and quit playing with it? Uh -huh. You don't know where it's been. Well, I, it's, I just think it's real neat. Sweet. She comes up with anything. Doesn't matter what we come up with. She comes up mm -hmm. with something. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, She's just fabulous. Oh, just cool it. <laughs> Ms. Patricia Haluska of huh? Blacksburg, Virginia, writes in and says, even though Laban didn't do a superb job on making the cheesecake, I'd like to try this myself. As for the beans and rice, I've been looking for a good, easy recipe for this duo. Thank you. Well, thank you, Pat. Hmm. I but didn't think I, you did a very good job. But either. do you remember doing a show with beans and rice and cheesecake? No, I really don't. But do you realize it's the second letter we've gotten about it? Uh huh. I think someone's picked up some other show from somewhere <laughs> and thought it was us. I don't know what the chances are. Dear boys, enjoy your show a lot each week. And the recipes I try always, I try always turn out delicious. Okay. Um, and turns the right snappy phrase occasionally too. Sincerely, Virginia Morris. Norris, I'm sorry, Lynchburg, Virginia. Thank you, Virginia. Norris. Well, this one is from Portsmouth, Virginia. And it says, Hi, we watched you today and sure would like to have the recipes. One was called one was corn pudding and another was apple blank question mark. Oh, that'd be Apple Betty. Oh, Wouldn't maybe it? that I don't apple know. Apple Betty? Mm -hmm. Apple Pan Betty? We've done so many. Dear sir, I think I'd be interested in the cookbook cooking cheap, but I didn't get the price of it, and I don't know if it is to be ordered from the address on this letter or not. Please let me know about it. I'd like the simple recipes you do where you don't have to get foreign parts for. <laughs> <laughs> this is from Mrs. Ralph Fulcher of Stewart, Virginia, and you know I got my business partner's mammy. His, his old mammy, uh, Bernice Hall, is from down Stewart. Oh, wait you know, a minute, you this go is over Bernice say, Green over here. Well, isn't that A lot of deja vu oh, on I here today. And Hudson hmm. Klein wrote in and said, we would like some recipes for a diet after heart attacks and surgery. Well, they're in our book. Hmm. Dear boys, sure like your cooking recipes and the way you make it look so hard to do at times. <laughs> <laughs> That's called filling time. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thanks for your recipes. Listen, I think we need to get fishy. Well, let me finish the letter. Oh, no. I thought you were finished. Talk about being pushy. Maybe were you a little nervous? You got a long recipe? Yeah, yeah. He's afraid he's not going to get his 28 minutes worth today. Mrs. Thelma Ross of... Penelia Park, Florida. They're not watching you. Their camera's on me. What, what? How did you say this was pronounced? Slow. Penelis Park. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. No. Pen yeah, Penel Penelius. Penelius. Yeah, you're right. the one that gave me a big, you know. Penelius. Well, it's a double L in Florida. It means it's in Spanish. And thank you very much for watching us today. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Stepped on your tail, didn't you? Yes, it did. Well, it's so flabby. It's hanging down like a pendulum. I'm <laughs> telling you, I'm not looking forward to this recipe today. Well, why? Because what I don't. A terrible thing to because say. Because I don't like working with raw fish. I never have. I'm a farm boy. We didn't have fish where it came from. Stepped out of the pond, and you threw those away. Oh, for Pete's sake! And to top it all off, I'm working with herring, which is the boniest of bony fish. 
So anyway, in his book, this is scalloped herring and potatoes, but it does smell real good. I must mm -hmm. tell you. And I, should I tell them? Uh, you want to start, or you yeah, want me to? Yeah, let me just show what I'm going to do, and then All you right. can get into yours. Uh, if you remember last week, we did some beer batter, and we've still got some batter here. And uh, I've got some flounder fillets here. Yeah, you've been floundering around for a long time. And they're not here. bony. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to slice up these fillets into little cubes, and then we're going to batter fry them. So we'll have deep fish fry, and then I'm going to do an, a salad to go along with this. So this is just a flounder fillet you get at the flounder store. And, at uh, the flounder well, store? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> Flounders are us. Uh -huh. It's a brand new store, ladies and gentlemen. I've seen, seen it advertised. Most many of your times. supermarkets are carrying. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, what can I say? <laughs> uh. You go to the Bass store or the Sun Perch store. Well, anyway, I'm going to, and I mean, you all know how to, to, to do the batter. You learned that last week. And these little fish pieces are going to be deep fried and I'm sure they'll be delicious. So that's all there. Well, I went out and caught these myself. <laughs> oh. Let me tell you a little bit about salt cured herring. They're real cheap, first of all. You get for, like on this particular day, for a dollar fifty-nine, I got enough of these things to feed an awful lot of people. Actually, it just kind of goes on forever. Now let me show you how these things come. If I can get it out of the package, what they do is they they pack these things in one of these sealed containers. You see, and it's got the it's it's actually got pieces of salt in there. You can see it at some places. There are actually little clumps of salt around in there, and it's sort of packed in a brine. And they're already filleted. We thought we were going to fillet these things today, but I, I got these home yesterday evening and discovered that they were already filleted. And I am so disappointed because well, I Well, yeah, did. because Laban was looking so forward to making fun of me on the air and having a great deal of fun with me, but I'm not kidding you, they are. But now i got to show you something, Laban. What you do... Now, first of all, even after they're filleted, you will note that they still have the greatest of plenty of bones. They have an entire ridge of bones down through here and you just leave them on there and do what you're going to do. I guess you can pick them out later or if they're soft you just eat them. Now what you do with this stuff is you trim off the tails if you want to or you can leave them on. I trimmed them off and then you you soak them in water, cold water overnight and what you should do is you should soak them several times. Uh, sometime for about 12 hours you soak these things, sort of get some of that salt out of there and, and what have you, and change the water a couple of times uh, during the evening. <laughs> it gives you something to do on a Sunday night when it's just an otherwise boring night, whatever night you're doing it. And you all of a sudden in the middle of a big party you jump up and say, I've got to change the water on my fish. And you run <laughs> out and you do that. And don't forget to do that. So anyway, that, you've seen the two stages of these things thus far. Now I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start just taking care of it. I'm going to peel a couple of, of uh, potatoes. I want you to see these potatoes up close, ladies and gentlemen. This is something that most people aren't used to. These are real, honest-to-goodness, dirty potatoes. These potatoes are so fresh out of the garden, they still have the dirt on them. See, people think that they come out of bins out of the stores and they're real clean. Mm -hmm. And that's not, this is what they look like with the dirt on them. Now I'm going to go back and we'll wash the dirt off of it. I brought these from home. I didn't buy these. Was oh, good, did you really? Wasn't a very good year for potatoes. They're kind of piddly. Not real big this year. I don't know what happened. So that's all I'm going to do for right now. I'm going to wash these and I'm going to slice them. Well, I'll tell you in a minute. Go ahead, Lady. Oh, where did you uh, grow those? These were grown on my business partner's farm down in Floyd County. Oh. These are Floyd County potatoes. Well, for goodness sakes. Well, now, I'm going to do a little salad that was sent in by Kevin Hobson of Blacksburg, Virginia. And this is called an old-fashioned country salad. And you start by slicing up four tomatoes thinly, and you just put them in the bowl. So that's easy enough to do. And I'm going to, fortunately, I've got a good knife here, and it's easy to slice them thinly. 
and then some other vegetables go in. And this is a salad because it's marinated for a little while that you can use even with these hard winter tomatoes that aren't oh. sometimes fit to eat. Oh, what went in there? <laughs> One of my taters slipped out oh, of my hand no. and went rolling into the trash can. Well, I gotta turn my fish over. Well, that's all right now, we can't get them dirty. No chance of that happening. Thank you very much. What will we do without Doris sometime? What did we do before without Doris? We made a complete mess out of it. Well, yeah, I remember that time he said, excuse me, and left and went to the store. Didn't come back until the next show. Mm -hmm. Things Just like that awful. used to happen around here all the time. Thank heavens we don't do that anymore. Now, what are you doing? I'm just slicing up these hard tomatoes that don't favor nobody. Uh huh. Where'd you get your tomatoes this time of the year? Are these some fine ones that you uh, did? <laughs> Sake. I gotta do it. <laughs> oh, how awful! Right here on the air, it's the it's something in those potatoes, Bly. Well, it wouldn't been so bad if you hadn't made such a big production out well, of it. I know, but I'm sorry. I it's guess there's nothing you can do. It's just awful. Well, let me ask you this. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake! I'll bet you've never seen Dan Rather sneeze, have you? What? Dan Rather, oh, sneeze. Dan would never sneeze. He's he's not even real. What do you suppose he does? <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you suppose he does? I don't know. It probably comes out a little hose and goes down. Oh, the for heaven's <laughs> sake. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that we've had enough of this conversation. Now what are you doing, Laban, regarding the cooking portion of the program? Well, I'm is. still slicing these tomatoes. Oh, as well, as you're can. right slow today. I know. Well, what right can you slow. do? Well, once I get past this agonizing little thing here. I, the show will get real frisky, I promise you. Oh, I'm gonna save are the you program sure? with excitement galore. These tomatoes are a disgrace. <laughs> These potatoes are too. <laughs> but they're free, hey. Well, I can't yeah. complain. What can I, oh, how's this doing? Let me take out, oh, for goodness sakes, we, you can't be screaming with laughter every second on this show. Well, I remember a time when we used to be, before we got old and tired. <laughs> Give me a break. Now, because, because, because these are such because dirty messes, just I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to wash them one more time, and then I'm going to put them in a bowl, and I'm going to wash them and rinse them one more time, just so as I don't get so much dirt in this stuff here. Don't have to do too much. Now, here's what you need to do. Oh, look, that, that one came out in the shape of a goldfish. <laughs> We're just going to slice these real fine, real thin slice, just old sliced potatoes, what it is, real thin. Now, a lot of people have fancy slicers, this is the way I do it. You don't need anything but just your finger and your thumb. Now, if you don't have a thumb, <laughs> I would suggest you try an alternate route. All right, now here we go. Now you're only going to need a couple of these because what you're going to do is you're going to layer the bottom first. Miss Doris and I decided before we went on the air that it'd probably be best if you put the potatoes on the bottom. Being that this is a non-covered dish and you're not going to have enough liquids to, uh, to cover it with when you put it in the oven at 375 degrees and bake it for an hour. I mean a potato gets mighty, mighty hard if it doesn't have any water or anything on it uh, for an hour. Now I'm going to wash these off one more real quick time, and then we're going to start doing our thing over here. Unless Mr. Johnson has something no, he needs I'm to just do. No, I'm slicing tomatoes. Now I'm going to do a, well I'll do a cuke here, but I'll use my... Do a cuke. So split the herrings and remove the bones. <laughs> Somebody's idea of a joke, obviously. Well, no, I was hoping you'd do it for us. Well, even when they're filleted, they have bones in them. Maybe somebody would like to tell us about that out there in TV land. Now, see what I'm doing right now? I'm just layering the bottom of a baking dish. This is just an old pie plate, but it's all right. It'll do for the likes of us with some potatoes. There we go. Now, what next? The I've onions? I've thrown in an entire cucumber for those that care. I but think I'm going to put some onions on this. Now what? You did what? You, uh huh? I, it's ah. too late. Too late. You weren't paying attention. It just hurt my feelings so bad I can't tell you. They're the right dull over there. All right. Oh, listen. Oh, they're going to sleep again. This crew needs to stay home and get some sleep at night. 
Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to layer just real thin and I'm going to put some on both sides of this fish. I'm going to take just a little bit of onion and just thinly slice it and put it across on top of the potatoes. Like so. See? Just a nice little thin layer of that. Do, 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 do. Oh, they're Mr. Mr. Castanet out there. Mm hmm. All right. I remember him when he worked for Jose Greco. Oh my gosh. Jose, did you say? <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, now that we've done that. <sighs> Excuse me, just a sec. <laughs> oh, oh black, come out from under the cap. <sighs> I'm sorry, <It's coughs> the salt fish, you know, salt gets down in here. And, uh, ooh wee, boy, I tell you, I've been, haven't, this has been with me all day, this fish. This fish has gone up and down the highways and byways. Now, for those that it. care or are really interested in oh, culinary now that, now treats. Oh, now he's got something to do. What? Well, no, I'm just slicing up. A, 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 now I've gotten a cucumber. Now I'm doing a green pepper. I mean, what can I do? Oh, okay. They're really delicious. All right, now here's what you do. Take your little herring fillets <laughs> and put them in here. Now, I know that someone is going to write me... <laughs> terrible letter and say, you fool, you buffoon, you don't know what you're doing. And you know what? You're right. I don't know much about fish. You all, now seriously, tell, you, you never had fish much on the farm? No. Now we had fish an awful lot in the Chesapeake Bay area, but I didn't live there very long. My daddy would bring down. Now we had a lot of oysters because we understood them. They're real easy. Mm. Well, you know, you know sort of now open my them up mother's and eat family them. that lived on a farm near here had fish all the time because they fished out of the river. Had yeah. trout and bass. Well, we were sort of uptown farmers, you know. Besides, we owned a beef cattle farm. I mean, it was not, you know, wasn't supporting the family if you were eating fish. What else am I supposed to do? Is that it? <laughs> Oh, I'm going to put some more onions on top of it. <laughs> I'm just layering these things. It's opening up the old uh, nasal passages, isn't it? Yes, sir. Oh, I want to tell you. Whew. I hope this fish is going to be as good as I think it is. Well, I tell you, the one I got in the oven that's baking right now is just going along just wonderful. Well, that onion has just gotten possible. I don't know whether I want to mess with it anymore. I'm afraid I'm going to cut myself. It's something I seldom ever do. Just take it and crumble it on top. Yeah, that's good, just like that. A little pepper on that, too, but wait a minute. Oh, I know what we got to do now. We take some margarine and dot it around. A little margarine in there. Just put that around in there. About, uh, well, I guess about, uh, oh, I don't know. Half a stick or so of margarine goes in there. We're going to put a little pepper on it, and we're going to stick it in an oven. Oh, and a little milk, too. I don't want you to forget that. It requires about a cup of milk. Put that milk in there. Boom. And a little pepper. Now, I seriously don't believe that you need any salt in this recipe, ladies and gentlemen, because this is a salted herring. And even though we have soaked it overnight, I think that probably it still has the greatest plenty of salt in it. Now there you have it. That's all there is to it. And uh -oh. you put that in an I'm oven. I'm worried. You put that in an oven, 375 degrees, and you bake it for one hour. And that's that. And in a little bit, we're going to take it out. It's been baking for just about an hour right now. As a matter of fact, it'll be ready for eating. And that is your salted herring uh, and potatoes. It's really kind of a one... I guess a one dish dish. Let's look at the recipes, see how these things are done while Mr. Johnson's still, uh, he's still doing I'm stuff. I'm not ready to look at my recipe. Deep fried fish. Deep fried fish, oh, it's the same kind of batter that we had last week and any kind of delicious uh, fish fillets without the bones. And there is the recipe for the batter. Right there. You saw the movie? Old fashioned country salad. And you need uh, everything below sliced thinly. Four medium tomatoes, a large cucumber, a, a Spanish onion, and a green pepper. And we're gonna have sugar, salt, vinegar, 
and uh, paprika and pepper to taste in a few minutes. Mm, mm, mm. Does sound good. The scalloped herring and potatoes, two salt herring soaked in water overnight. One package ought to do the job real well. Several raw potatoes, two onions, a cup of milk, and a half stick of margarine. And you know that herring leaving is real cheap. It's dirt cheap. Mm -hmm. It's, as I said, a little less than two dollars for a package. And uh, one hour at 375 degrees. And it's in there right now, and I'll be taking it out in just a couple minutes. I'm still slicing tomatoes. This is a high slice kind of salad. He slices, he dices. Mm -hmm. Just like that woman that used to do it for money. I wish I got paid for this. Well, Laban, it's up to you to entertain them now. Well, I'm going to. As soon as I get through slicing this tomato, I will do one more uh, little thing. I'm going to do the dressing on here, Ooh, which is just real easy to I do. I want them to see this. It's real pretty. This is what it looks like when it comes out of the oven. Right here. Well, that's pretty too, but this is prettier. Okay, there you go. See, and that's nice and bubbly, and it's scalloped. Even smells right half good too. All right, It'll now, be interested in seeing about them bones. Now, now we've got a tablespoon of sugar that goes over this salad. All right, there's our sugar. And we're going to use a teaspoon of salt and sprinkle that in. We Those don't deep have fried to... fish look great, Laban. Uh-huh, they do, don't they? Real lovely, tasty. lovely. And a half a cup of vinegar, and this is your standard issue apple cider vinegar. That goes in on our salad there. And then we've got uh, some paprika to go in here, so we're going to Put in a, a teaspoon or so of paprika, and some. If I could have the pepper, Doctor Bly. Doctor Pepper. Oh, I mean, yeah, Doctor Bly. And I'm going to put in some pepper here. If I can. Oh, I'll start sneezing again. All right. Here we go again. All right. Now we got to toss this baby. Toss a baby. Mm-hmm. Oh, I mm -hmm. see. That baby. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now it really needs to marinate. Overnight? Oh, no, no, just for an hour or so. But, well, it's pretty. But it is pretty, and I think we'll be able to have it here in just a second. It's as pretty as a salad. Mm hmm. Look at this. Is that it? Well, it's close. It's close. I have to stir it up. That's, yeah, that is basically it. Because we got to have the witch come in. Oh, we'll bring her in. Tell her to come on in. Oh, witchy. <laughs> witchy woman. I know she'll be. Be in here very shortly. Here she is. Here she is. How you doing, doll? See you later. She got in my hair. I always hate that when she gets in my hair. We'll see what she says. She says you have dandruff. Dear guys, what are you? A bunch of cowards? You should have what's that? Bopped, Bopped that clown. clown that rode in last week. A good one. We thought you had more gumption. Well, I had some gumption and I left it at home. Next, you'll be doing yellow vegetables. What does this say? Ed Oker from <laughs> Golden, Colorado. Oh, for heaven's sake, oh. Ed Oker. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Well, let me get you some herring. And let me give you some of this salad. <laughs> let me get you a big piece of herring. Yes, indeed. And let me get some potatoes. <laughs> well, it does smell real good, I will say oh. that. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, yes, indeed. Uh, let me get some herring, too. Yes, indeed. Oops. This is somewhat of a messy salad here. <laughs> and uh, let Oops, me give I you missed a, the herring part. a hmm? piece of fried fish. Ooh, well, you boy, didn't that get looks much so... over there. Oh, I, greatest plenty. I'm just so full. This Wait is a my... minute, Bly. You didn't get any herring. Get some. <laughs> to... Right now. Okay, I... I've got some. Now, now. put it on your plate. <laughs> you want to grow up and be a, an adult, don't well, you? Well, I can enjoy it from here. Oh, I don't have to get any closer to it. wonderful. Yeah, this is a guy that eats, uh, what are those little raw fish? Oh, anchovies. Anchovies. Heaven. Eat some. Look at those bones. <laughs> Millions of bones. Oh, I'll swear. I hate What bones. a weenie. I really do. Mmm. Mmm. It's delicious. Mm, it is. Mm. 
What are you drinking, man? <sighs> a little ale. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now that's real good. I like that because I can't see the bones in it. Now let me try the. Uh, oh, this fish is good. The he salad. Is such a fishy wimp. Oh, mm, the salad is good. Very, very good.